Good afternoon, everyone. This is Attila speaking from Budapest. Welcome to the first session of the e-tutoring program. I'm really excited to have you all here to work with you um, during the coming months. Uh, this is a really interesting initiative that uh, you applied for. Um, this is a very complex learning experience for all of us, where you will work with uh, colleagues from the other end of the globe, and we will have uh, the chance to increase our network. Um, so thank you, first of all, for for uh, uh, signing up for the training. Um, I'm very happy to see a lot of uh, familiar names on the list of applicants. Uh, I was lucky to meet uh, many of you in field trainings or in Budapest. Many of you completed our trainings before. So this is really a uh, close family environment that we will be working in. I'm really excited to be part of this. Um, let's start the session. Uh, this is being recorded. I will use it for uh, training purposes to send it to whoever is not here. Please uh, keep that in mind. You're muted. Uh, if you have anything to add, you can use the little icons underneath the list of participants. Um, I think you have all been to one of my sessions before. Just press the hand and I will unmute you. Um, the session should take about one hour. Uh, we are 12 of us here at the moment. Uh, I got more replies yesterday or, or even before confirming uh, the attendance of today, but uh, I think this is good, en good enough to start already. Um, this is the outline that I was planning to cover today, okay? But this is not fixed, uh, not carved in stone. Uh, if you have anything else apart from these uh, major points, I will be happy to discuss. And also, please feel free to interrupt me at any point if you have a comment or a question. There will be no specific Q&A as such. So we should uh, talk to each other and have uh, questions, comments as we go. Okay, um, it would be great if all of you could uh, connect to the audio with a speaker and a microphone so you can talk and we can hear each other's voice. If you have a problem with your microphone, you can still use the chat box to type any question or comment, which I'll be uh, reading out to all of us. Okay? Um, so, introductions first. Um, you have filled out the application form. I've uh, seen some of your motivation and your profiles, but still I would like to hear from you um, what was your motivation for joining this initiative? Uh, what do you expect to gain out of it? Where are you coming from? And anything you want to share just in a matter of, uh, of, uh, of half a minute, maximum one minute, uh, because uh, there are 12 of us here. So let's start. Let's start uh, by the alphabet. So. Ali, my friend from Lebanon, I'm, I'm muting you now. Ali, are you there? Ali, I just unmuted you, so you can try to speak to us. Ah, okay, so Ali's mic is not working, so if you want to add anything, you can use the chat box. Let's move now to Andrea. Andrea, can you talk to us? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah. 
sorry, I, I have some trouble with the with the sound, so I didn't hear before. So just very briefly to introduce yourself and uh, your motivation for joining this training and uh, your expectations, if you have any. Okay. Yeah. Well, my motivation are uh, like two two things especially. One is to enter into an international career. I'm a, actually a national officer for project control in Ecuador operation in the Americas. And the other is uh, to share and to uh, gather more uh, knowledge from other colleagues. So like having an exchange between uh, all of us and that's our, our, my, like the biggest uh, expectation. Thank you. Um, yes, I, uh, I think uh, uh, moving to an international career is, is something you all share, or at least uh, the majority of, of you share as, as a motivation, and, um, and, and this training will be an important credit in your career path. Uh, it's a fact sheet recordable training, obviously, you will get a nice certificate from me when you finish and you will uh, enjoy uh, access or, or a better chance to access uh, other training opportunities as well, uh, which will eventually help you to, to, to obtain an international post. And also what Andrea said, the discussion among participants of PM1 and, and us tutors is, is again something important and very interesting um, part of, of this training. Bryce, let's move now to Bryce. Bryce, you're unmuted. Can you talk to us? There's a mic problem there. Let's try Drita. Hello? Do you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Hello, uh, everyone. Um, I'm Drita. I work as senior program associate in Kosovo, Pristina, Kosovo. I work in program for almost uh, 19 years, and I have extensive experience. My motivation to apply this, uh, first of all, was uh, to be able to apply to PM2 certification. Uh, because the eligibility criteria there doesn't uh, capture the staff who are like me, who have extensive experience and we are not allowed to apply without passing the e-tutoring program. <laughs> this is one. And of course, to see um, how I can deliver my knowledge to other staff who are interested to gain uh, more program knowledge. So this is uh, more or less. Thank you. Thanks a lot for that. Uh, yes, I know that many of you want to apply to PM2, and that's a, that's a very important uh, aspect. Now, I don't want you to do this just because it's a requirement to get into PM2 at some point in your career. Obviously, that's the benefit of all this, that it will give you some advantage when applying to that program. But uh, that should not be the pure and only motivation because then, um, because I want you to enjoy this opportunity and, uh, and to see it as a real development opportunity and the benefit of it will be uh, an increased uh, chance to get into PM2, which is, uh, is a valid point. Uh, uh, this was the first year in 2018 that uh, a very limited number of seats were given to g stuff in UNHCR. And uh, luckily, all of them were e-tutors before. Because if you complete the program, you will see that this is a major contribution to the GLC and to the organization in general. And we try as much as possible to recognize that contribution you're about to make for, uh, for other
colleagues who wish to learn. So it is a realistic um, motivation. It is not easy because as you may know, um, DHRM, the Division for Human Resources, is implementing um, the certification scheme which requires all international program staff to complete PM2 eventually. So this uh, lays down the primary target audience for the certification program. So if you're an international program, you're kind of by default have access to PM2. But uh, obviously, uh, the number of international program colleagues in UNHCR is, uh, is is, is a limited number and soon we will reach a more or less full coverage of existing colleagues across the organization. Obviously, there will be always some newcomers, but still the increase to PM2 for colleagues other than international program staff will increase um, significantly in the coming years. And uh, if, if, you're, if you have completed the program, the tutoring program, you will have a, a, a better chance to be among those. Okay, let's move to Fahim. Hello, Hello we can hear you. How are you? Thank you, I'm great. How are you? Thank you very much, Fahim. It was a bit difficult to hear you, um, but as far as I could catch, uh, you were applying to PM1 as well, uh, but got accepted to, to the e tutoring program. Um, this is because uh, we consider PM1 as a, as a mid-level training and many of you have uh, 10 and 20 years of experience like you or Drita, and we believe that uh, you should start at a more um, 
sort of advanced level training, uh, which uh, the tutoring program is. PM1 primary uh, targets colleagues who are in the program section for uh, for just a few years or um, uh, in the in the in the earlier parts of their careers. Um, here, uh, obviously, we will talk a lot about programmatic issues, but we consider that you already know, and we know that you're you're already familiar with the with the major concepts, theories, and practices in in program management. Um, uh, the the rest of your comments were not uh, crystal clear. I understood that you were discussing uh, promotion opportunities for general stuff, uh, but feel free to put more comments, uh, more uh, specific details into the chat box. Uh, but what uh, what I understood is that you were discussing uh, career opportunities for general stuff, that it is really difficult in UNHCR, which is something uh, I tend to agree with uh, as general stuff myself. Um, what I I can I, I could tell my own story about this, but what I can advise you in terms of uh, of, of the context of this program, that building your professional network is one of the most important things in uh, in in moving on with uh, your career path in UNHCR and such uh, initiatives as the e-tutoring program is great to increase your professional network because you will work with colleagues from across the globe, you will work maybe with the heads of offices from another operation um, who will obviously remember you, who will obviously um, keep you in their networks and and you can you can uh, turn to them for whatever advice or or god knows when uh, you will make use of these important connections but certainly this will add to your chances in uh, in in moving on with your career okay so let's move on uh, we are already 19 minutes into the hour but i think we are having a good discussion but Maybe quickly uh, for the others also to introduce um, Fiseha. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing your name right. Uh, can you hear us? It's fine. Do you hear me, Attila? Yes, I hear you. Okay. So this is Alam from Eritrea Operation. I'm working as a program associate at present. So. I have already taken the PM1 course and uh, I had the workshop uh, in Budapest where uh, I met you, Attila. So my motivation is already mentioned by the other colleagues, but uh, just to add uh, a point, uh, I also am interested to continue learning and le real learning while uh, helping others. Thank you, Ala. I remember now. Great to to hear you again, and thanks so much for being here. Um, indeed, uh, learning by teaching is the best way uh, to to further uh, improve your knowledge, and you will be able to practice that here a lot. And moving to Hadir now, again, uh, someone who have completed PM1. I'm, Muting you, unmuting you now, Hadir. Can you hear me? So Hadir is not with the microphone. I'm moving now to Jane McKenna. Jane, can you hear me? Good afternoon. 
Okay, one of my motivations for, for applying for this course is to, to share experiences and also challenges that we face in pro program management and also look into ways of um, into diverse ways of solving them within the, 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 the regulation. The other thing is I've, real, I've worked in programs for quite some time and I've had the, 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 the lack or the, the privilege of sharing or trying to help others in areas of program management. And I've learned that the more I share, the more the, 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 the concepts that I share stick and I get better solutions for those problems. So I want to believe through each study, I will interact with people from various uh, backgrounds and who have different challenges and experiences. And from that, we'll be able to pave the better solutions for the challenges that we face in the program. Thank you. Thank you, Jane. Indeed, um, sharing experience here is key. Uh, our I mean, the GLC's objective, one of our objective of this training is to have people who can really share practical advice and uh, real life stories from the field in terms of program management. That's really an advantage of all of you being here. So that's a very important point. And also what you mentioned is, uh, I don't know what uh, how you phrased it, but whatever you share sticks, I think this is really an important point, I can just confirm that as a trainer myself, whatever I train, I really uh, uh, learn for a lifetime. Uh, this is really uh, the best way to, 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 to have it all uh, in your head. So thanks a lot for that. Um, Carmel? Carmel, can you hear me? Yes. Do you hear me also? Yes, we can hear you. Go ahead, please. Yeah, I'm Carmel, and I am a program associate in Gereda with uh, more than five years' experience. And as many have already said, I have attended also the PM1. And for me, uh, the each training is a great opportunity to learn from other colleagues and the uh, operation increasing my skills and knowledge in program management. In brief, uh, each tutoring is a sharing by learning. It will be a, an amazing opportunity to exchange, to, to be in contact with others from other operational experiences. Merci. <laughs> Merci, Carmel. Um, absolutely. I can assure you that I will give you learners from other operations, from other continents even, so it will be really a rich experience for everybody. Lydia? I'm Lydia from the Kenya operation. I've uh, worked in program for four years, and uh, my motivation is to, to, to apply for this, position, for, for this uh, program is to to build, uh, to, 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 to learn from others as well as to share experiences that I have accumulated and the knowledge that I've accumulated over the years and also to interact with quite a number of people because I believe that uh, we are diverse. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Lydia. Good to hear you. Moving on to Martin. Martin, my friend, are you there? Hello, can you hear me, Attila? I can hear you perfectly. Go ahead. Okay, okay greetings from Tehran. I'm so happy to be here. Um, I believe that working in program uh, is, a, is a continuous learning experience. And I think you can learn new things regularly if you are willing to, of course. And uh, since um, before I joined UNHCR uh, almost five years ago, I had been in the academia, I have been an educationalist. I, I totally believe in what you said, Attila, that the best way to learn something is to teach it. And I believe that uh, since certain things in program uh, need need to be reviewed, you know, I don't know, many times. So I believe that this is a very perfect opportunity for all of us to learn by teaching and to know what other ways people have 
of looking at the same problem. I really hope that we all benefit greatly from this uh, opportunity. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Martin. Good to hear you. And um, was it last year that you were here? Time flies. Anyhow, thanks a lot for uh, for your valuable comments. I can only I, I, I can only agree with you. Okay, so Moni uh, Moni has an issue with her microphone. Uh, also, Sophia Mukeshima. Let's see if you can talk to us, Mukeshima. Apparently, no mic. Let's try Yasin finally. Yasin? Hello, Angela. How are you? Hi, Yasin. Good to hear you. I'm, I'm fine. How are you? Very much. Uh, If yes, I'm, I'm very, I'm, ve I'm very sorry, but uh, your connection is uh, is really weak. So I, 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 I think it's better that you put your comments in the chat box because it's really breaking, and I, I, I can't really hear you. Okay, okay, sorry about that. Uh, yeah, that's with webinars. Uh, sometimes connections are difficult. Um, few of you could not have the chance to speak, but uh, feel free to put any comments in the chat box. I will read them in uh, to the others. Okay. So objectives, expectations, I think more or less we covered that. We will see the syllabus that I've sent you yesterday with updated um, um, dates. Um, let me see someone put a long message in the chat box. Sophia, uh, let me read Sophia from Greece. She has completed PM1 last year. Um, great to have you here, Sophia. So, as she's writing, although I have been uh, with UNHCR as a program associate for three years only, I greatly benefited both from PM1 last year and working with several senior program officers during emergencies from whom I have learned a lot and would like to share these experiences and practical advice while also broadening my knowledge through exchange with colleagues from other operations. Thank you so much, Sophia. I can guarantee that uh, you will have all the chances to share the knowledge and recent experience from the huge Mediterranean uh, influx. Okay, so um, let's see the objectives of uh, the training as I phrase them. Um, so the first few points here, uh, as uh, we have discussed before, the e-tutoring program is by far more than just a training with, uh, with some program material, e-learnings, and, uh, and purely focusing on the program concepts and theories. Here in this program you will be dealing with people, with real persons. Um, so this is actually one of the most complex learning experiences uh, in, in, in our portfolio. Um, and you know these things are very much typical to program management. Uh, applying different communication styles 
for your colleagues and NGO partners is something you need to master. Program management by um, nature is a cross-functional function, to put it this way, because um, uh, you are providing the infrastructure for the operations response to certain problems. And this response involves other functions, involves other colleagues, involves a lot of NGO partners, all of whom require a different approach, a different style, um, a different way to, to address issues. So uh, in program management, you need to have uh, uh, you need to have a fine-tuned soft skills for for all these situations. Um, you will assess others' understanding of programmatic issues in UNHCR. This is also something you're doing when you are reviewing proposals. Um, you get proposals from the partners. You get the proposals from other sections. Um, especially right now when you're compiling the country operations plan or operations plans as it is phrased in recent terminology, you need to see if uh, other colleagues' contribution to the plan meets the programmatic language that we are all using. Formulating constructive feedback on uh, programmatic documents and proposals is something you're doing a lot when you receive uh, the proposal of, from partners, you need to comment on them, but also keeping in mind um, uh, not to be offensive, to be constructive. All this is key in your job and we hope, uh, we, we envision the tutoring program as an opportunity to fine tune these skills, okay? Um, we have talked about the fourth point, extending your professional network. This is very important. Uh, you're part of a, of a pool, of a family of, um, of colleagues who want to learn and who want to share their knowledge uh, in, in the program family across UNHCR. Um, uh, you will deal with other program colleagues and you will deal with colleagues from different functions, from protection or from managerial positions even. And you will increase your network by also working with other tutors, sharing your experience uh, that you had with this or that learner. And also, uh, you will see that uh, the assignments in PM1, which you will be correcting eventually, requires learners to share insights of their own operational context, which you might or you might not be familiar with. I, I think and I know that all of you are extremely busy uh, at different points of the year. You might not have the time to, to look into documents from other countries or other operations. But when you will be correcting assignments from, when Sofia will be correcting assignments from Chad, or when Martin will correct assignments not from Tehran, Iranian context, but from uh, European context, maybe this will be really a good opportunity to peek into these different operational contexts. And yes, finally, uh, least but not least, you will have a better chance to uh, get into PM2 and to build your professional career. I will do my best to advocate for you when it comes to the selection already next year, if not then uh, in 2020, um, I think uh, you will uh, have a fairly realistic chance to get into the certification program in the next coming years. If, uh, if, if you're with us, if you're helping us, if you're contributing to others' learning journey in, in PM1.
many of you have completed PM1 and you have seen how much it means to receive good comments from a tutor, how much it means to be guided by someone else on the, in, in this learning experience. Obviously, we'll try to recognize if you can also uh, play that role for us this year. Okay, uh, and also our objective, the GLC's objective here, uh, obviously we are not trying to hide the fact that for us also it means a lot that you guys are here, that you can um, be our four frontiers in, in delivering quality trainings across the organization. Without you, we could not maintain um, the yearly cohorts of PM1, which varies uh, between 120, 150. Last year, we had uh, an enormous five number workshop, which was crazy. Um, this year, we only have four, but still, a lot of colleagues, 140 learners uh, this year. Uh, by far, we could not meet this requirement without maintaining uh, the tutoring network. Okay, um, and also I've mentioned this before. Um, we want to give genuine feedback to PM1 participants. We want to give original feedback, uh, which have a lot of color, uh, a lot of real aspects, day-to-day uh, -day stories and, and best practices on how this and that was done in your operation, what was your challenge, how did you overcome this challenge. This is something um, no external tutor can do. No. Uh, outsider can do, or even us, we sit here in Budapest, um, we, we have an overview of, uh, of a lot of operations, we travel a lot, but still we are not sitting in field offices like you do. We don't see uh, that level of detail as you do. You're in best position uh, to give these key details into these assignments that will really add to the learning experience of, uh, of PM1 participants. And last but not least, we are trying to build a pool here um, for the best tutors to stay with us, to stick with us for a long term and, uh, and, and to, to be tutoring for consecutive years. We, we see this a lot actually. The tutor program started in 2016 and I still have tutors from that first year with me still in 2018, tutoring with me for the third year because um, colleagues, some colleagues really find uh, 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 pleasure and um, fulfillment in, in, in playing the tutor's role. So uh, if, you, uh, if, if you enjoy this experience, you're more than welcome to stay with us for a longer term. Okay. Let's see the expectations. Any questions up until this point? Please feel free to interrupt me or uh, add anything. Ali, I see your hand, but maybe that's from uh, uh, the previous introduction part. So if you have a comment, I can unmute mute you or just put it in the chat box because your hand button is pushed. If not, yes, thank you. Okay, so no questions until this point. Let's talk about the expectations. Now, this is really important. Um, first of all, I want to clarify just, uh, just in the beginning, what uh, is the uniqueness of this training opportunity? Unlike other trainings in UNHCR, or I don't want to talk about other units in the GLC, but just us program, other trainings in our portfolio, PM1, PM2, or I could mention anything other, uh, such as cash-based trainings or whatever, there is uh, not 
much at stake, to, to put it this way. It's the learner and some resources from UNHCR's side, uh, which is uh, uh, put in. If the learner completes the training, we are all happy. Uh, the learner will benefit and we did our job. Now, the e-tutoring program is different from this angle because uh, when you're entering the feedback phase, you will be allocated actual learners from the PM1 cohort. This is a special situation because if for some reason you cannot comply with, uh, with the expectations, a learner will uh, be affected on the other end. So the preparatory phase and, and our work here in general is really, really important because um, we don't want learners to be affected by any kind of delay on our side. If you have completed PM1, and many of you did, uh, you know perfectly well how important it is to have timely feedback, to have good feedback. Unfortunately, I know some of you from previous cohorts had issues with their tutors because um, obviously this is, uh, this is not a paid service that we are engaging with you. You are volunteering to be part of this program. You're expecting to learn from this program and we expect you to provide your feedbacks. But in every cohort that I have managed, uh, in the in the last six years, there were always a few issues, and if you were one of those participants who experienced these issues, you know very well that it's really annoying that uh, you don't get your feedback, that uh, you get a poor quality feedback. So it is really important that we have a, we have a proper preparation, and we are on full track when the feedback phase begins and you take good care of your learners, okay? Um, right, so the preparatory phase. We will have a lot of uh, webinars, forums, you have resources, uh, you will have to do the PM1 modules. Um, these are all uh, things which I will do my best to prepare you better for the tutoring work. But more important, uh, than anything, you will have to do sample assignment reviews. What are these? Sample assignment reviews will be your actual homework in the preparatory phase, okay? So, I will give you assignments that were submitted in earlier cohorts, okay? by actual learners, by PM1 learners. And you will have to correct these assignments like you would do in the feedback phase. This will not come from your actual learners. This will be just some samples that I pick from maybe 2017 or even 2016 cohort. So at this stage, nothing is at stake because this is just a demo feedback but you will have to provide a thorough feedback on these documents, and I will give a thorough review on your feedback activity. And you need to get a pass mark on this activity before you can enter the feedback phase, okay? I need to see uh, that your contributions are similar to the others. I might have to correct you. Uh, or you might need to change your approach or uh, you might need to give less details or more details. So a lot of things uh, could, be, could be shared in, in, in this uh, sample assignment review process, which is really important, um, a really important element of, of this preparatory phase. Okay, we'll see the syllabus in a minute. But just to say already here that uh, this eight week period is quite busy. It's quite uh, packed. 
um, we had the, uh, uh, a little delay in the launch of this cohort. I apologize for that. I originally planned this preparatory phase for, uh, for a duration of 10 weeks, but uh, we have to do with eight weeks. I think it'll still be okay, but please be ready to uh, commit enough of your time in the coming eight weeks, okay? Actually, um, officially the preparatory phase will begin next Monday, um, but we have this webinar today. Uh, it doesn't really matter. The point is that we will have to work hard in the next eight weeks. Any questions about this before we go into detail? Okay, so the feedback phase is a longer period of time running from May 15. May 15, you can guess that May 15 is the launch of the summer cohort of PM1. That is the point when you will be linked with your learners from PM1, okay? That's sort of the life period of this program. May 15 to September 10, a few months where you will be linked up with your learners and will have to guide them through this period, okay? Here are the deadlines. As you know, there are three assignments in PM1. These are the deadlines of those three assignments. Now, don't be mistaken, your job in the feedback phase will not, uh, will, will not be around these three days only because learners might submit assignments a little bit earlier or a little bit later. Um, they might ask some further advice from you um, and also you might need to uh, do some progress follow-up or other things uh, with them. So basically the feedback phase is a longer span of time than the preparatory phase. Um, you will have more work around these deadlines, obviously, because the feedbacks uh, will have to be provided within 10 working days after uh, receiving them. But uh, just keep in mind that you should, you should uh, be aware of where your learners are, maybe send them a reminder if needed uh, or agree with them on an alternative schedule if, uh, if they flag that for you, okay? Now, the feedback phase runs from May 15. We have about uh, six, seven weeks until that point in time, okay? Now, in the coming weeks, in this period, we should come to a conclusion whether or not you're ready and able to do the job. I'm sure all of you are, but in every cohort last year and previous years, there are always colleagues who, I wouldn't say change their minds, but maybe their situation will change, okay? They apply to the ERT and they get deployed, or they have uh, an extreme amount of extra workload, which was not there when they started the tutoring program, okay? You applied, but you're not yet aware of what it takes to do the job. Maybe you underestimated uh, the time required to, to, to do the feedbacks. All of these things should come out during the preparatory phase, okay? Um, if you think that you cannot do the job or if you think that you will not have enough time to do the job, this should come out well before May 15, okay? Because what I really, really want to avoid here is that I associate learners to you 
one, maximum two learners to you. You start some kind of work. Uh, you provide your introduction. The stage is already set. And then in June, early June, let's say, you realize that this is too much for you and uh, you cannot do the job. This is something we should definitely avoid, okay? So I ask all of you that you really focus on the sample material during the webinars, during the forums, all the things we will be doing in the coming weeks and think about how it will be in the feedback phase if you will have the capacity and the energy to, to, to do the job. I will understand fully if you say, okay, sorry, I need to step out because of this and that reason. Um, I, I understand that and I will accept that. But please, if we get to, and I hope that with all of you, we'll get to May 15 and I will give you the learners please stay with me and do the feedbacks because it will be extremely difficult for me to reallocate your learners to other tutors already when we are into the cohort. And that's something really, really, I should say, maybe harmful to the PM1 experience. I know some colleagues experienced that last year that I was running around for tutors to replace other tutors. So it's really a mess. We want to avoid that as much as possible. Okay, any questions so far? Interrupt me, I've talked too much already, I think. So if you have a question on the expectations, please feel free to raise your hand and, uh, and comment. Matan. Uh, sorry, Attila, on the preparatory phase, April 9th to June 3rd, um, you said webinars, forums, resources, PM1 e-learning. The PM1 e-learning is the same as the one that we already passed in PM1 when we were doing PM1 or is it, uh, is it different thing? Does it have additional material on ways of teaching and stuff like that? It would be great if you just clarify. Thank you. The e-learnings are the same, okay? So if you have completed actually PM1 last year or whenever, you're lucky because you don't need to do it again, okay? The system recognizes previous progress. So if you did, if you completed, there are eight modules, eight core PM1 modules. If you completed them uh, in PM1, it's the same stuff that I pull in into the e-tutor curriculum, okay? So that is uh, already done for you. Or if you completed PM1 as part of a, there's a, there's a package in Learn and Connect called Program Management Level 1 Self-Study Material that's accessible to everybody. If you completed that, same thing, your progress is recognized in the tutoring package, okay? There are few other things, Martin, yes, few other things, um, some documents, some uh, useful uh, tutoring guidelines, best practices, which are not uh, e-learnings, they are PDF documents, yeah. Um, the webinars forms obviously are specific to the e-tutoring uh, program. Uh, you will have to attend those, okay? So in the preparatory phase, I would like everybody to come to my webinars because uh, without you, it doesn't, it will not have uh, the added value. We will have forums in Yammer this is also important. This is not time bound. You can contribute whenever you have a few minutes. Um, but I, I would like everybody to, to take part eventually in the forums. Resources is something you have to read. Uh, and PM1 e-learnings, um, it is important that you see what, other, what your learners see. So it is important that you're aware of the depth of content um, they have to meet. So that's why the tutoring curriculum has the PM1 e-learnings incorporated as well. And the sample assignment review, we will talk a lot about this later. This is something you will have to pass, okay? Um, 
Fahim is asking how many tutors have been selected this time. I started, uh, I selected, let me check. I selected 37 colleagues who applied to the e-tutoring program. Um, I selected 37 colleagues for this cohort. Uh, this will be sufficient for us, but uh, just note, just uh, just be aware that there are obviously other tutors as well. We have 140 PM1 learners uh, in the cohort. Obviously, there are other tutors as well uh, who have completed the tutoring program previously. Uh, they will be covering the rest of the learners um, in the cohort. Let me see. Uh, Ali is asking, I completed PM1 in 2014. Is there a difference? No, uh, the content is the same. So if you completed in 2014, uh, the modules have just slightly been updated. Uh, but your progress will be um, recognized uh, in uh, the tutoring package. Andrea, oh, okay, it's, it's a private uh, message. Andrea is leaving, no worries. Um, uh, if you want, you can review, Andrea, you can review the recording of this material, which I will share shortly, okay? All right, so if there are no more questions at this point, just a few more things I want to clarify. Um, you will have maximum two learners in the feedback phase. You might have only one, okay? I cannot, I, I don't know uh, this uh, uh, at the moment. We will see how many tutors will actually uh, make it until the feedback phase. I hope everybody, but you know, few colleagues might decide to to step out or 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 they withdraw their applications we will see how many learners you have uh, but you will definitely not have more than two okay three assignments in pm1 um, but three assignments doesn't mean three feedbacks just keep that in mind uh, uh, one assignment may need several rounds of rework from your participant, which requires several rounds of review from you, okay? But obviously, the initial feedback is the most time-consuming uh, activity. Uh, reviewing uh, the second round uh, rework from your learner will take uh, significantly less amounts of time, okay? Um, I think uh, these uh, objectives or expectations speak for itself. Uh, we expect you to provide quality feedback. We'll give you a lot of material and help with that. Specific core scoring documents for each of the assignments, which will be extremely helpful. Um, important to know that we expect you to be a tutor rather than a teacher. So you should not be um, uh, uh, you should not take up a lecturing approach, but uh, be be a tutor, guide your learners through this experience, um, provide constructive critique as to uh, anything that might be um, just uh, uh, offensive or, or not effective to reinforce the learning experience. And also, this is important to point out, to some extent, we expect you to follow up on your learner's progress. Um, obviously, it is our role to resolve any non-compliant issues for PM1 learners. But if your learner is just uh, having a few weeks, uh, sorry, few days or maybe one week delay, that's, uh, that ha has to be solved between you and the learner, really. So we don't intervene if your learner uh, misses the deadline by three days and he communicates that to you. That's fine. You can grant uh, these kind of uh, uh, extensions. And also, if you see that your learner misses the deadline and has not 
communicated anything to you, we expect you to send a small gentle reminder to the learner and, uh, and see what the issue could be. Fine. Um, so let me quickly share the syllabus that I've been working on. So this is the introductory webinar that we are having right now. Okay, PM1 cell studies are part of this uh, syllabus, are, are part of uh, the preparatory phase. Um, as I said, you don't need to do this if you have done it already, okay? So if you have completed PM1 in the past, this would not apply to you, okay? So next week, there's another uh, session because some of you could not come, many of you could not come actually today. So this date is actually for next week. If you're here today, you don't need to come, okay? Don't worry. Then uh, week 16, we will have a group discussion around tutoring approaches. Um, week 17, there is no, um, we don't discuss anything. You will have to go through some reading material and continue with your PM1 self-study if you haven't done it in the past. Week 18, uh, we have another webinar where we will actually discuss in detail the first written assignment, uh, the topic of which is assessment and planning, okay? Uh, you will receive some sample assignments already, which you will only have to read through before the session so we can talk about them, okay? And obviously, continue with your PM1 self-study if you, if you have any modules missing. And then uh, week 19 and 20 is when you will have to pass sort of a graded assignment. That's how I, I phrased it here. Um, you will have to review and provide feedback on sample PM1 written assignments from previous cohort, as I mentioned. Uh, you get a sample document anonymously. You will not know who the learner is. You will have to provide your feedback, your detailed feedback, the same way you would do with your real learner. I will give you detailed comments on your work, on your style, on your approach, on your comments, everything um, that I will find. I will give it back to you. I will give that feedback back to you, okay? You will have to submit your feedbacks by the 10th of May, and you will have to get a pass mark by the 20th of May. This is kind of your assignment in this training program, okay? I might give you, uh, I might tell you to fine tune your feedback because it doesn't yet meet the standard. So we have these two weeks to cover um, uh, this part, okay? And then week 21 is um, uh, the big week when you guys will have uh, access to your learners, okay? They start the cohort actually a bit earlier than that, but for you guys, it's enough to put your first real introductory message in the system to your learners on week 21, uh, May 21, 27, during this period. We will start with a webinar showing you the specific details of the assignment tool, the assignment tracking tool, which is a platform that you have not seen before. It's kind of a, a back-end platform of Learn and Connect, which is designed for tutors who interact with learners, okay? So this is not the interface that you have been accessing in your PM1 studies. This is specifically designed for tutors, okay? It's quite straightforward to use. I will do an online demonstration um, on this webinar. And the next day, 
you will be required to put a welcoming message to your uh, learners and also you will have to demonstrate that you can uh, operate the assignment tool through some demo accounts. Uh, we need to make sure that everyone is perfectly aware of, uh, of how of how the tool works, okay? And the last week is basically only uh, put here for completion of, of additional modules that are towards the, the last part of PM1. And then comes the feedback phase. Uh, we will also have some webinars here discussing subsequent assignments. Um, there are three assignments, as I said. The second one is on budgeting, and the third one is on monitoring and reporting. We will have webinars on each of these assignments right before you would work on your feedbacks, okay? So I will schedule these webinars early enough to cover the, cover the detailed aspects of um, of, uh, of the specific assignments that you will be receiving from your learners, okay? Yeah. Any questions? Any questions on the syllabus document? Um, Study that document and please try to mark stuff in your calendar, okay? Maybe not by the date, but rather uh, just, uh, just get a weekly view of your calendar and put some comments that around this time of uh, this month, I will have to prepare for receiving assignments from my learners. My, in my experience, the initial feedback for one assignment would take around one and a half, two hours to compile. So it's a, it's a good, good two hours of work, which you need to dedicate and possibly in a focused environment without much interruption. So you can do really a good job. So just keep this in mind and uh, be prepared to to, to allocate this amount of time around the given deadlines in the syllabus document. But obviously, uh, we will talk uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot more on the different deadlines and requirements as the, as the cohort progresses. I will, the, the forums will be um, the channels where you can ask questions from us or from, uh, from others as well. And obviously, I'm here to help through email or phone if you have any challenge. Um, Ibrahim has a question. Ibrahim, let me unmute you. Ibrahima, do you have a mic? Can you talk to me? Okay, Ibrahima, if you would be kind to just type your question in the chat box and I will try to answer, okay? Any other questions? Anyone else who has a, a question at this point? Okay, if there are no more questions, um, that's more or less uh, what I wanted to cover. Uh, yeah, one last thing, the e tutor curriculum. Uh, you will be enrolled uh, soon into this curriculum, which will have uh, the PM1 self-study material. Uh, These, the, the, the eight modules of PM1 and the related tests. It will include some documents, uh, PDF documents, files, which will be useful for you to read through uh, 
about tutoring, about uh, distant education and things like that. And this curriculum will have uh, uh, the sample assignment part as well. Okay, now this is not yet ready, but obviously you can start with the PM1 self-study material because you can access this stuff online if you haven't done it before uh, in, any of the, in any of the learning activities. So if you haven't done PM1 or haven't looked at uh, the self-study, just type PM1 self-study into Learn and Connect and you can already start uh, the core PM1 modules as it is detailed in the syllabus document. And when I enroll you into the actual curriculum, these progress, uh, the progress you make outside of the curriculum will obviously be recorded and uh, capped, okay? Um, that's it from me. Let me unmute all of you so we can say goodbye. Thanks a lot for being here and have a great day and uh, let's keep in touch. Thank you, Attila. Everyone. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye.